I'm Kevin Cameron, one of your Marion County Commissioners, and welcome to this month's Marion County Today at CCTV. Today, er, September is, is um, actually emergency, National Emergency Preparedness Month, and we're going to be spending this session talking about emergency preparedness. And with me today, I have our emergency manager uh, for Marion County, Ed Flick. Ed, welcome to the program. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Thanks for uh, putting a spotlight on this topic for us. It's really important, and I know you've been uh, you've been here. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? I think you've been here about what a year and a half, a little it, over a year and a half. It's about two years now. Yeah. Um, my wife and I both graduated from Western Oregon uh, years ago, and I went in the Army. And at the conclusion of my my active duty career, we decided we wanted to come back home and retire. So. Um, I found that emergency management related strongly to what I'd done in the Army, and uh, I'm happy to serve now as your emergency manager. Well, thank you for your service uh, to the United States as well as your service here in Marion County. We really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. So uh, September being <coughs> National uh, Preparedness Month or Emergency Preparedness Month, why don't you tell us a little bit about the overall uh, emergency preparedness uh, program at Marion County and some of the things that you are involved with? Well, Commissioner, um, emergency management, I think, is becoming increasingly relevant. We only have to look at the headlines this past week with the flooding in uh, Louisiana and the earthquake today in, in Italy, um, the, the unfortunate rise of, of active shooting incidents in our community. So there's, there's several threats and hazards out there, and the purpose of our, our program is to better understand those threats and hazards and how they can affect um, our communities and then do everything we possibly can do to either prevent them or to mitigate the effects should they take place. So I was uh, preparing a little bit um, to, to ask you some of these thoughts and I wrote down uh, some of the different um, disasters or hazards that people would potentially come across, and some of them we don't even think about in our day-to-day -day lives. That's Maybe right. we can uh, share a little bit about some of those different hazards uh, that, mm -hmm. that we look at, the drought situation, uh, for example. Uh, uh, certainly. Um, we actually, the, the, the start of our process is to catalog all of the threats and hazards that we see, and we categorize those into to natural disasters, and you mentioned drought in particular is one that's touched our, our county. Um, earthquakes, floods, um, winter storms. Uh, we also uh, think of technological hazards and the, uh, the best example of that would be transportation incidents mm -hmm. like uh, the recent uh, rail incident in the gorge. Um, and then there's also things that are human caused unfortunately and that's uh, cyber is an example. Um, there's uh, really no shortage of threats and hazards, but there's only so much energy and time that we as a community can, can spend to prepare for any one hazard. So we started last year and, and, and got together a great bunch of stakeholders and made sure we understood how those threats and hazards affected the communities that we live in. And then um, from the priorities we heard, both from the, the, the ordinary citizens, from the business community, the faith community, um, our public safety partners, we, we, we made a list and prioritized it. And we've been working now um, really hard. Of course, the one we always have to, to be concerned with in Marion County is, is flooding. And so we're working hard on, on, on flood mitigation. But also the other side of that coin is drought. And, and we right. see the early impacts of low water in, in the Detroit Lake now. Uh, so we're working on drought as well. Um, we just got done spending a lot of time working on the, the the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. That's the, the one hazard that probably represents the most catastrophic uh, hazard to us in our community. Sure. Um, but we're also working now to better understand uh, how hazardous materials flow through the county. And, and we're going to be presenting some of those findings this month um, and then working again on how, how we would respond to a, a, a violent intruder attack. So uh, people watching, what are some of the ways that if somebody's watching, they said, hey, I want to I be educated more, I want to get involved, help other people educate. I know at National Neighborhood Night Out, mm -hmm. in our neighborhood, a lady came as a, I think, a CERT, a cert, of, a cert uh, yeah. training. Can you share with the people ways they could get involved and make a difference, uh, besides even being prepared at home? Well, there's a, 
there's a lot of opportunity right now and a really a wellspring of uh, projects that are community-based that people can get involved in. And later in the program, um, uh, we're going we're gonna to explore some of those. But uh, the, the start point, the, the home base, is, is, is uh, the emergency management website where we have all of these opportunities identified. Um, we're working right now um, on community-based planning in, in all of those hazards that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we we're, we're really want to make sure that we get as much involvement as possible. In emergency management, it, it, we like to say if you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. Sure. So what would be your role as emergency manager of Marion County? What would Marion County's role be in, in the event of a pick a, a potential disaster that would happen? What would ha your role? Of course. So um, we work as hard as we can to mitigate and make the likelihood of events less probable. Sure. But in the event something does happen, the, the emergency management program would stand up what's called the Emergency Operations Center. And what that center does is provide a place where um, the various public and private agencies and organizations can come together and synchronize response, right, to do the most good for the most people. And it provides a, a place where the commissioners who would provide the leadership and direction can, can get situational awareness and can, can, can give policy level decisions. But really it's about synchronization and cooperation. No one organization can do it by itself. Yeah, it would take everybody working together and, and practice. I, I got to observe one of the, yeah. the drills that you had out there for, was that three days or four days? We were, we were going for, for four days, and um, that was a great example of starting small, like we know we will in an earthquake. Yeah. Um, we brought together 35 agencies that worked on mass care and housing and shelter on the second day. And then we had 93 people from 13 different organizations. Speaking of come. earthquakes, I kind of I kind of feel one right now. No. I think you have something to share with us. I uh, do. Your, your go bag that you carry with you. You maybe want to share with the people what you have in that go bag. You can just throw it up here if, it, if you want. The, uh, the idea is you need to have two weeks of supplies at home, but you also need to think about how you're going to get home. So my bag's a little different because I need to be prepared to do my job from where I'm at. But there's some things that are common. And you may need to sit down. Those are the, oh, they got, they got you, I guess. OK. There, I, can, okay. I can do this sitting right. down. The, uh, <laughs> Eye protection and um, first aid, shelter. Um, this is just a Mylar blanket. Um, food and water. It's impractical to carry around a lot of water, so I carry a, a, a filtering device and a container that I can draw water from and into. So you draw it from uh, one of the creeks or whatever and then filter it? Okay. In most, most months there's a lot of water around um, and you can do that. It's always good to have a, a knife and um, there's going to be a lot of debris, particularly from an earthquake, so we like to carry gloves mm -hmm. and a second source of light. Um, From what I used to do in the Army, I like knives, so I carry two of them. Um, but we also need to communicate. So we carry uh, radios that let us talk not only with our public safety partners, but also amateur radio groups, um, which is a great way to get involved, by the way, is uh, becoming an amateur radio operator. We know the phones aren't going to work after an earthquake, so we carry a satellite phone. And of course, all these have batteries, so you got to have backup power. Um, this book here is the playbook that um, Oregon Emergency Management put together to, to figure out how we would orchestrate a response. So I carry that. We're always ready for that. And maps. Um, and finally, Marion County Roadmap. It's, you, you could be outside for, for a while. So I always make sure that I have shelter. So I carry this all seasons. It's just a light jacket that I can use to to stay dry and in the sun or rain, it's always good to have a hat. Well, great. Ed, thank you very much for uh, your service again to our country and to Marion County and for sharing with us. Uh, obviously, I would not have a sat phone in mind, but uh, the, the basic survival things everybody should have in their car with them all the time, wherever they're at, so in case they get stuck. So thank you very much. Thank you, great. Commissioner. Welcome back. I'm Janet Carlson, Marion County Commissioner, and we're still here with Marion County today. And our guests are Ed Flick, Marion County's Emergency Manager. Sure. Hello again, Ed. And uh, Caitlin Esping, who is also with Public Works, is that right? As That's an correct. AmeriCorps volunteer. Mm -hmm. 
So, Caitlin, since we heard about Ed in the last round, tell us a little bit about yourself. What, are, what is your role with Marion County Public Works? So, I do access and functional needs planning as well as outreach, uh, preparedness outreach. So I help with our social media page and a lot of our community events, and I also get to work with um, the community groups that we partner with. So how did you get to be an AmeriCorps VISTA volunteer? Uh, well, first step, apply. Okay. So I did that, and I'm placed through the Oregon Health Authority team. Mm -hmm. So it's a team of VISTAs placed all around the state working on health equity uh, missions. And I really see preparedness as an important health issue because after an event, people if you're more prepared then you're more likely to be able to return to a healthy life okay and so what what did you do before you had this role uh, before I worked for Salem Kaiser Public Schools as an instructional assistant so kind of a big change there yeah really yeah. at elementary level junior high, high school or? yeah I worked with first through fifth grade I'm um, doing literacy groups well very good and Ed give us a little bit about your background too while we're at it I'm um, 24 years in the Army grew up in Washington County um, mm -hmm have uh, in-laws here in, in Salem Kaiser area and uh, our families here and we've uh, been happy to settle back here at home. So let's talk for a minute about community partnerships. You mentioned when you were talking to Commissioner Ca Cameron that if you're, how did the quote go, if you're not doing it with people, you're, if you're doing it alone, you're not doing it right. That, did that, I get that's, that right? That's okay. how we look at it. All that's right. right. So how, how do you do it right in terms of community partnerships and collaborations? We think doing it right is finding those individuals and organizations in our community that are already doing good work and then helping to find ways to bring them into this effort for preparedness and response. Um, government plays a critical and central role, but government is not at the lead. We really have to find ways to make those things that already work in our community focus in this area. So give me an example of maybe a partner that's not government that you've reached out to and then how that fits within the work that you're doing. Well, we're going to talk about a few and I'll leave those for Caitlin, but a great example um, is Marion Polk Food Share. So one of the challenges we're going to have following a Cascadia earthquake is the roads are just going to be disrupted. So we're not going to get a lot of help for the first two weeks, if any. So what we've done with Marion Polk Food Share is find ways that we can leverage the network they already have to deliver food to the people that will need it until that external support comes. Um, they give away and distribute nine to ten million pounds of food a year. They already have the relationships with the, the agriculture community and the wholesalers and the, the, the uh, grocery stores. We don't need to duplicate that effort. All we need to do is bring them as a partner into our planning so that when that day comes we, we have a, a plan to respond. And so just give an example to them. So they're out there doing that great work. They already have those relationships. You reached out to them to be a partner in the plan. How does it hook up? They'll have food, mm -hmm. but they're going to need maybe transportation. They're going to need routes cleared. They may need um, coordination on the receiving end mm -hmm. to establish a point of distribution. Um, those are the kind of things that working together we can achieve. No one can do it alone. Great. All right. So, Caitlin, let's talk a little bit about the relationships you have on some of the projects that you're working on. So, we've got the Emergency Communications Collective, Mid Willamette. All right. Yeah. So, describe what that is. So, the Mid Willamette Emergency Communications Collective is a group of um, public information officers, media outlets, uh, local government like Marion, like us. Um, as well as cities and Polk County and hopefully soon Yamhill County as well will be involved. And the point of this effort is to make sure that we're getting factual, consistent messaging around preparedness and specifically we've been focusing on earthquake preparedness mm -hmm. um, out to people because it can be really confusing when you see, like, do I need a 72-hour kit? Do I need a two-week kit? What's the right answer? So just ri really trying to get all that so that everyone's saying the same thing and advising, giving the same advice. Okay, so give us an example of something that you've worked on so far. Anything? Yeah, so yeah. Um, you may have seen some stuff with hashtag think big. Okay. So we have um, the Statesman Journal has run mm -hmm. several stories. Uh, we've done a story on Kim, Kim Uzi Radio. Um, we're also working with the Red Cross to promote their Prepare Out Loud event, which will be September 22nd. Um, and 
as well as other opportunities in September, which is National Preparedness Month. So really getting the word out there um, about these events that are free to the public so they can come and get fact-based information. We also have been distributing um, the Shaky Ground publication that was made by Oregon Emergency Management. So we've set up um, locations and publicized where people can go to get those for free. So in terms of content, so everyone's saying the same thing, who's putting the talking points together? Is that a collective effort or is that someone's on point or how does that work? Yeah, so we meet together once a month um, to go over, and actually before when this first started, there was a communication plan established that talked about, okay, which topics will we focus on each month so that, you know, in September we're talking about earthquakes, whereas before we may have been talking about preparedness in your home. Mm -hmm. um, and then we talk about that plan, evaluate how successful it's been, um, and continue on from there. Excellent. So then the next one is community organizations active in disaster. It looks like COAD, is that what you call it? Yep, co Everything's got an acronym. Yeah, All right, so everything has an acronym. Tell us about what that is. So Marion Polk COAD is our local COAD, and that's a part of a larger organization, which is VOAD, or Volunteer Organizations Active in Disaster, and that's at the state and national level. So COAD is um, local, it's faith-based organizations, nonprofits, um, private sector businesses, local governments, really all kinds of organizations and agencies that get together and pool their resources so they're not duplicating their efforts. So if we have like the Red Cross, uh, they do sheltering. They do sheltering all the time, all over the world. They're the sheltering experts. We don't need 10 people doing sheltering, you know, we need the experts doing it. So then other organizations can focus their efforts on things we might need like donations management or volunteer management or <coughs> other services that would be uh, really necessary for a successful response and recovery. Mm -hmm. well, great. And then SEDCOR, where the whole next section is going to be on SEDCOR, but can you give us a little preview about what your role is with that um, initiative? Yeah, so I helped them a little with the Cascadia Threat Series, which was a really awesome series. I'm sure they'll go more into detail. Um, SEDCOR has been a really great partner for us to help us to reach the business community. Um, and we will have another opportunity coming up soon. We got a grant to fund a um, COOP, which is Continuity of Operations Planning Workshop that will be available for businesses to come and learn how to create um, contingency plans. So we've got just a little bit of time left, and Ed, you had your big backpack on the last mm -hmm. uh, segment, but Caitlin, you talked about 72-hour kits and what people need at home. Mm -hmm. So what is maybe something that people need at home that they're not thinking of right now? If you could come up with like one thing that you could just say to people, go out and get this. And I know there have been some articles in the paper, like you said, about yeah. that. So I'm going to pull one that's actually uh, say the City of Salem Emergency Manager, Roger Stevenson's favorite, is mm -hmm. to keep shoes in a bag by your bed, on your bedpost. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people wouldn't think of that, but if there's an earthquake and you're in bed and things have fallen and broken, you get out of bed, chances are you're going to injure your feet when you step on the ground. So if you have your shoes right there, you can put them on and save yourself the, you know, a minor cut on your foot. If you have to walk everywhere after that and the roads aren't passable, that's going to be a big problem. Very good. I never would have thought of having, <laughs> having shoes <laughs> in my bed. Well, thank you both for uh, all of the work that you do. And Caitlin, it's great to have you with Marion County. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. I'm Sam Brentano, Marion County Commissioner. We're continuing this segment on uh, emergency management in Marion County. Ed Flick is still with us, our emergency manager. But this segment will be a little bit more talking about the business community here in, in, our, in our county, in our area. And uh, Elizabeth Peters, who represents SEDCOR, is here. And they've had, we'll get through this, but they've, they're taking it serious. I'm so proud of them, happy with them to begin with. But let's start at the beginning, Elizabeth. What about, would you tell about yourself? What, you showed up a couple years ago. It's delightful, but give us your history. Thank you, thank you. So I am uh, SEDCOR's Marketing and Communications Manager. And my history is I, I have worked for trade associations over several years. So I worked for the Oregon Restaurant Association many years ago, and I worked with the Oregon Association of Nurseries not too long ago. And so two big industries for the state of Oregon, and uh, the focus is on business, helping businesses strengthen and grow in the region. We've never talked about this before, but you must have known Kevin, Commissioner Cameron before oh, yes. then through the 
restaurants and then have a lot of relatives in the nursery business, so yes. we'll get to that another time. Yeah. Um, so SEDCOR got involved with emergency management and a well-received, uh, um, well liked uh, series on, on the uh, earthquake. Do you, you want to just take it from there and where yeah. it went, what you learned? And well, how I think uh, where I'd like to start is where the reason why SEDCOR got involved in this whole topic. So SEDCOR is Strategic Economic Development Corporation. And so we're all about that um, strengthening business in the region, helping businesses to grow, and also attracting businesses to the region. And so when we started to talk about this idea of helping businesses to prepare for emergencies, we really saw this as a critical part of, of what we, what we, something we have to do. Because with some of the, the threats that we have that Ed was talking about earlier, um, businesses are, I mean, business is a lifeline in our region with all of the jobs here and the wealth that's here. And so we really saw this as a natural part of what SEDCOR has to do, and that is help businesses to prepare for any kind of disaster. And particularly, it was around the, the Cascadia, the threat of Cascadia. Was there anything that really came out and surprised you in that? or? Uh, you said, oh, I didn't ever think of that. It's worse than I thought. Or oh, well, there's sorts. been a lot. Yeah. It's been a huge uh, education for me, particularly around the, the uh, you know, the potential quake that we're, that we're looking at. Um, but, you know, what, what I think has been interesting for me is just to see the level of detail involved in preparing for a disaster, and particularly on the business level. You know, if you think about it, we have all of these commuters that come into the region. How many, 25,000 25, or something like that? And so that's a lot of commuters coming into the region. Should there be a disaster like Cascadia, chances are roads and bridges won't be passable. And so we'll have all of these people in businesses and at the state and at local government who pr probably can't get home. And so businesses are, are going to be th have to think about, how can I house all of these em employees who are important to continuity of my business for maybe two weeks um, before they're able to get a home? And how, how am I going to be able to help them to get home? I think I so. can walk home to sublimity in two weeks, don't <laughs> okay. you think? I think you can. Okay. But I know what you're saying, and I agree very much. Yeah. And not everybody comes from the immediate uh, Area, there's there's a, a yeah. pretty good uh, bunch come down the freeway from Portland, Wilsonville. Um, so anything else? Pe I know it was well received. People talk about it. I, I always had a conflict. I couldn't be there, but I was I was paying attention mm. anew. But yeah. So what we started with was a series of educational programs. We partnered with uh, the OEM, with Marion County, and with the Red Cross. And these we had three. Uh, pretty significant seminars, programs, you could call them. Uh, the, la the one we had in December, in fact, we invited the public to it, and we had a lot of uh, displays on things that people can do, that the individuals can do to prepare for a disaster. And I think that's another key message for our businesses, and that is to help your employees be ready for a disaster, you know. Help your employees have their get home kit so mm -hmm. that they have everything they need to be able to walk home or, or however they're gonna be getting home. So encouraging their, the individuals in their companies to be prepared. Um, and the series, it was a three part series. We also had some, some additional seminars. Um, and then we also, uh, SEDCOR has been very active with the Mid Willamette Emergency Communications Collective. So we're also a part of that that, that Caitlin referred to earlier. So probably you're, you've already touched on it a little bit, but there's two questions that they have for us this afternoon. They're really pretty close together. And the first is the role of the business community in emergency management or preparedness. We've kind of talked about that with employees. You, anything else that, that highlight what the community of businesses can do? Um, be aware, make sure roads are built, put the pressure on bridges. Let's just get political. Mm -hmm. We need them. Uh, 
Anything else that comes to mind that way? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the businesses themselves need to prepare their companies. So let's say I've got a facility. Should there be some damage, how can I um, mitigate that ahead of time, uh, any potential risk of damage? There's also IT. What happens if I don't have my communications and IT? Is my data protected? Um, electrical, water, sewer, some of these infrastructure elements possibly won't be available to me. So how can a business owner be prepared for those those types of outages over a pretty long period of time, potentially, with a, with a threat as big as Cascadia? Um, so there's getting the business ready, getting your employees ready. But then I think a super important component of this is uh, making your services and your abilities available to emergency management. So, you know, call Ed and his team ahead of time. Get on that list if you have the ability to do things like, um, you know, construction, excavation, electrical, other services. I mean, it's, it's a huge list, and I think, Ed, you could probably expound on that. But, but if you can think of something that your company can do to help the community get ready and get back on its feet, then, then be thinking about that and and make your company available for that ahead of time. Yeah, yeah well, you won't be able to go to our yellow pages anymore, but even the computer sure. won't be available, That's so right. you need to know ahead of time where you could where you could find those. Have mm -hmm. you gotten pretty good response Ed, on that, or do people know what's in need that we'd like to have a little better catalog of what's available? Absolutely, Sedcor offered such a, a a wonderful network of members and. At the December event, we asked businesses to find their response function. And 65 stepped forward and established contact with us. Mm -hmm. And over 30 of them have gone one step further and provided us detailed information about what they could do, where they could do it, what they would need to do it, so we can work together with the private sector to put ourselves in the business of response and recovery. We've got about a minute left, and I'm thinking of something, and Janet will say, why can't he just stay on task once? And that's true. But uh, we've been talking this whole program, the county, the bigger scope, the community, but it just reminds me, you know, the individual such a role. You had your go kit, that's one thing. Um, but you talked about all the different types, and we didn't even mention fire, which is always one of my big fears, especially right now. But, but individuals and their families, if we can let them make them think about have a have a plan it could be a car wreck well it's an emergency who are you going to call you ought to know where you're going to go how to find you um, those kind of discussions on an individual basis have to happen too so i just didn't want to leave this without that opportunity to say yeah there's big things going on but the individual needs to take care of himself and his family or hers well i guess we're out of time that where'd that go but thank you so much and i hope we've to enlighten people about our emergency management here in marion county Thank you.